the events of that day to lead to the discovery of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is the first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. As you can see from the title, today's video is going to be a little bit different from what I usually do because I wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. This is not a review, I just want to clarify that. Because today is August 18, and in case you don't know this, in August 18 of 1973 is when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre took place. I want to open this video talking about one of the most crucial parts of this franchise, and it's did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre did happen? No. What happened was that the film was originally marketed as being based in true events in order to bring wider audiences and, and also to act as a subtly commentary to the political climate of the time. And in case that you don't know this, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is an American horror film that is directed by Toby Hooper and this film follows a group of friends who fall victims to a family of cannibals while on their way to visit an old homestead. The main character of these films and also of the franchise is Leatherface, who is the killer. Now, while the film is not based in real events, the only thing that is actually based in it is Leatherface. He is loosely based in the serial killer Ed Jean, that he used to do the same thing as Leatherface family that was making furniture with the bodies and also the skin of his victims. The film was officially released on October 1st of 1974 and back when it was released, it was initially received with mixed reviews, but over time, it gained a cult following and is considered today one of the greatest and most influential horror films ever made. It is credited to being the originator of several elements that we have seen throughout the years in the slasher genre, and because of the success, it led to a franchise that continued the story of Leatherface with some sequels, prequels, and remakes, and also including video games. This is not only a film that introduced a very well-known killer to the genre, but also became a heavy influence for upcoming filmmakers. And as a result, this film laid foundations for the Halloween, the Blair Witch, and also the Evil Dead franchise. Wes Craven actually did his 1977 film The Hill Have Eyes as an homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Riley Scott used this film also as an inspiration for his film Alien. And also Rob Zombie has seen this film as a heavy influence in his work like The House of the Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Reject. Like I said, the film led to a franchise that right now it consists of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Remake from 2003, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning, the prequel from 2006. We have Texas Chainsaw 3D, Leatherface, that is another prequel, and the last one that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre that arrived to Netflix last year. Now, similar to many films of these times, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was made on a small budget, and as a result, they were forced to be filming seven days of the week, at least for 16 hours. They weren't even allowed to wash their costumes because they couldn't risk damaging any single one of them, and this meant that a Leatherface costume that was with fake blood, by the end of the filming, it became hard as a rock because they could not wash it, because they were also afraid that it was going to change the colors or the texture, because that's something that happens. I have worked with fake blood before, of course. Fake blood has evolved a lot since the 70s, but let me tell you, it's hard to take those stains from shirts or anything. I cannot even imagine the material of the, that costume. I understand a little bit why they were concerned and they decided to just push through it and for a straight month the actor had to wear the same mask and the same costume without washing it. And also since they were filming in Texas the heat was awful. They were shooting with a lot of heat, poor ventilation inside of the house and a high humidity. That sounds like hell, to be completely honest. So like I said at the beginning, one of the reasons that, that they decided to market this film as based in real events is because they wanted to be a subtle 
social commentary. Now, this film has been widely and excessively analyzed to the point that many critics and scholars have come to the conclusion that the film is a representation of what is called cannibalism capitalism. The Leatherface family is forced to turn into cannibalism after they lose their jobs in a slaughterhouse because of new technologies. The prequel actually opens with Leatherface losing his job and then he returns home and they have a little explanation at least in this timeline of how he ended up with the chainsaw because this is something that I did not explain and this because we have the original sequels, prequels, remakes. We have different timelines and the franchise that they can turn a little bit confusing and also Leatherface origin and in the case of of where he got the chainsaw there's details that are different including the last name of the family another aspect of the film that many critics and scholars have interpreted is that the film can be seen as a paradigmatic exploitation film in which the female characters are subject to brutal violence what they explain is that in the case of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the male characters, they die very quickly, while we have the female characters that they died in violent, more sadistic, and they have to endure a lot of torture. And also the fact that the film incorporates what is known today as the final girl trope, for them, this film can be considered a little bit of an exploitation film. And at last, it's also considered a vegetarian film. Even the director expressed it at a moment that the film is about meat. Even the director said, and I quote, I gave up meat while making the film. In a way, I thought the heart of the film was about meat. It's about the chain of life and killing sentient beings. And it has cannibalism in it. Although you have to come to that conclusion by yourself because it's only implied. Meaning that the film can be seen as a vegetarian film and also had some commentary to animal cruelty. But just like the director said, this is something that you have to come to your own conclusions because it's more implied than explicitly said. That it has been heavily and widely analyzed ever since it came out back in the 70s. Now, I want to end with my personal opinion and take on the film and it's that I am not the biggest fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 1974. Uh, what happened with me was that I actually saw the prequel and the remake first. I didn't saw the original until many years later. And by the time that I saw it, I liked it, the remake a little bit more. And my opinion ever since has not changed. I have rewatched them both. I even rewatched the original for the sake of this video. And my opinion has not changed. I am not saying by any means that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 1974 is not a good film. Because it is. At the end of the day, it's a very good horror film. For the time that it was made, it became known one of the most influential and greatest horror films ever for a reason. I do acknowledge the impact that had in the genre. It served as an inspiration for so many filmmakers. Even today, we see so many inspirations of it a great example is a very recent one is x from a24 we have some scenes and clips that they do definitely resemble the texas chainsaw massacre and even to a certain extent at least i felt that the film resemble a little bit the film of course the plots they are completely different but if you have watched the film you will understand Every single film that tries to resemble or copy this film, they can either succeed or fail in the process, but it's very easy to see it. It's very noticeable the details and which aspects they are bringing from this film. The Sex Exchange of Massacre is a type of film that I believe that every single horror fan should watch at least once and everyone who is carrying into horror for the first time, this is a must watch. I actually did a video a few, like it was almost a month ago, of classic films that you should watch this was part of the list because like i said just because it's not my favorite that doesn't mean that i cannot acknowledge the impact i do separate my opinion from the reality just because it's not my favorite doesn't mean that the film is bad because i truly believe that it's very good for the time the low budget the practical effects and the limitations the film is very good it's very impressive leatherface is brutal is very scary to be honest this is a type of film that will scare more than one i cannot imagine little kids watching this back in the 70s where just a year before we have the exorcist now we have the texas chainsaw massacre what a great time to be alive watching horror films in movie theater
I envy every single one of the persons that they were able to live that. But at the end of the day, if you have not watched it yet, you should go and watch it. The film is available to stream in Shudder and Peacock. It's worth giving it the chance. Now, when it comes to the rest of the franchise, that is up to you. Which timeline do you want to follow? Like I said, at least in my case, I prefer the remake and the prequel. I do not dislike the Texas Chainsaw 3D, but I didn't like the last year one from Netflix. I did a review. It's available on my channel. I even have the trailer reaction, but I am not a fan of that one. I do not think that it was a good one. And as of today, actually, is going to be released at the video game. I will not be playing it because I am not a gamer, but it looks fun and looks very, very good. So if you are going to play it or if you're playing it, maybe, or you already played it by the time that you watch this video, let me know what you thought about it. I'm very curious about it because it looks so fun. But like I said, I am not a gamer, so I will not be getting myself into it. But as for the rest, I think that this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and let's celebrate today on Texas Chainsaw Massacre Day, one of the greatest horror films ever been made, that no, it did not happen. But honestly, I think that is one of the greatest marketing campaigns that I have seen. <laughs> it's smart and it works. Met so many people that they asked me, that was real? That actually happened and I have to explain to them that no, it was just marketing. But a very good one to the point that to this day. And it's even featured more than one in the franchise. So for many people, this may have happened. But well, thank you so much for watching. And before I go, definitely even though i would not like to be stranded in texas in the middle of nowhere with a white house just saying bye that much i know <laughs>